Hi friends. Under the context of COVID-19, we are trying to get a sneak peek into the future through the rare view lens. This is written by advocate Matthew P. Matthew who has taken LLM from the National University of Singapore and is an experienced international tax manager at Singapore right now. Orator Dr. Bibin Jos, pulmonologist from Pala. You might not have understood it well if somebody told you that some time ago he or she practices minimalism. Hence a minimalist. However, with this nationwide lockdown having extended for more than a month, we all are minimalists in the making. Do you wonder why? Yes, that is quite true as all it takes is just 21 days to create a new habit. Welcome to the new life of minimalism, the way our grandparents used to live, even though the term minimalism was not coined then. While we all might be worried like anything about the turn of events that might unfold in the near future, I get a feeling that we are far more relaxed. If you are not convinced yet, please see how much more you sleep during this lockdown. In any case, I am definitely sleeping more than the pre-COVID-19 levels. Sleep is a medication by itself and helps our body to recoup and prepare us for the next day. Netflix, Hotstar and similar businesses which are touted as the next big recession-proof theme in this lockdown period have confessed that sleep is their biggest enemy and has openly commended that their competition is against people's sleeping patterns. For people who haven't thought of sleeping well yet, there is no perfect opportunity than this to rearrange your sleeping patterns. The same applies to food or eating patterns. No better times to be hale and hearty. As this article is neither about sleep nor on diet, let's get into the business by asking the simple question. Has your curve of happiness shifted from driving the BMW or Lamborghini or world tour on the most expensive cruise ship or an expensive Givenchy dress or Louis Vuitton bag to you can fill your own answer during these unprecedented times. While there is no dearth of articles regarding life before and after COVID-19, this is a humble attempt to pencil in the habitual changes that we as individuals or families and on a larger scale countries are witnessing or going to witness post this pandemic. We have further divided changes and impacts from the perspectives of our families, societies and the companies and governments on a larger scale across the world with a particular focus on our mother country, India. A rare view review, the past and present. Let's look into ourselves and our families to understand the changes that this forced lockdown has brought forth to our habits. We started eating what's generally available at home. We adjust our own wants such as eating non-veg or any particular delicacy with needs such as rice, lentils or fresh veggies from the backyard. For any of us who were on keto diet or Mediterranean diet, we are more than happy with simple homely foods or veggies or fruits. We ceased eating out neither pizzas, banana fries nor the exotic coffee brews. Kids are more than happy to survive without burgers or bakery stuff. Maggi has become a lifesaver and is a must have akin to salt or sugar in households. Husbands or kids are happily involved in helping their wives or mothers with daily chores which was something unheard of since time immemorial. Bachelors relearned how to wash clothes and keep their space tidy. We understood how made cakes and simple pastries are possible, so we started baking at home instead of buying expensive cakes for birthdays and other occasions. 
no multiplex or cinema outings on the weekends no emotional buying spree when there is a discount advertisement or one for one offer seldom routine doctor visits or health checkups at diagnostic centers is something that have unknowingly become part of our lives most of us may now feel healthier with home cooked diet or relaxed lifestyle our sleep and might be wondering whether these routine checkups were absolutely required or just psychological booster shots but take care that whenever you are having an increased symptoms you should go to a doctor or a hospital and get evaluated for that we might have realized that god is within each person and that there is no real need to go to temples churches or pilgrim centers kindness is the greatest virtue and if you are kind hearted then there is no personal virtue which can surpass it we learned that marriages or naming ceremonies and other happy events can be postponed alternatively these events can be conducted online or via registration without any fanfare similarly death and the ensuing processes can be completed with participation of a handful of people we understood that honeymoons in destination weddings or photo shoot were just money down the drain young folks in metros have probably understood that they can survive without late night parties or dj and monthly vacation or stay vacation at farm house we relearned that what is essential travel and understood how much time or energy or money can was spent on non essential travel to make our presence felt smokers or drinkers were forced to cap smoking or drinking as these items are not as easily available as it used to be many of them use this opportunity to get scot free from these vices the lockdown have had many of us thinking while film stars and sport personalities have so much of stardom and why are they paid heavily should not doctors or medical staff or police officials or researchers who are fighting from the front line and have no choice to opt out from providing their services be the real stars are in they akin to suicide bombers as they are working 24/7 against this pandemic with the possibility of death in sight we have started looking at safe investments such as fixed deposits as we cite the signs of a great economic slowdown in short households have been dwindling of expenses many times over and it is a revelation for many of us on how much we spend on our wants most of us spend time on reflection and reconnection over a plain vanilla black tea or coffee rather than imported scotch whiskies also family members within the same roof were at social distance spending more time on online websites or on demand live streaming platforms notwithstanding the above some families faced the worst of the times as the sole breadwinners were daily wage earners with no emergency reserve cash however in some families the elderly or bedridden posed a greater challenge than lockdown domestic violence ran the roost in a few families and the deprived section is wondering when this lockdown would end let's continue the rare view review further where we delve into what has happened in our country since the beginning of lockdown the government pressed the lockdown button assuming that it is the best solution it was fair to assume that the government never thought that there would be extensions to the lockdown when it was declared initially but how long would it be possible to keep the entire country in complete lockdown is a big question which we will deal with separately in the second section of this article the government is not receiving any taxes due to complete lockdown on the other hand government requires huge money and the need is increasing day by day to combat covid-19 and to pay regular expenditures 
such as salaries or pensions. The GST collection was a wash off during the lockdown period. These twin blows have prompted the government to seek larger say from World Bank or International Monetary Fund or Asian Development Bank to fund the big expenditures or stimulus package. Companies have closed abruptly and were unable to conduct businesses. Finished goods lying idle at warehouses would put pressure on cash flows and loss is certain for perishable goods. In case of milk, we saw companies throwing away milk in drains and rivers. With lockdown across the globe, we as a generation saw a barrel of oil trading less than one liter of water, followed by oil trading in the negative zone. It's quite baffling why oil producing companies, major oil exporting countries did not stop or reduce the oil production in the light of reduced global activity. Private companies have started for low that is granting a leave of absence from employment but kept on payrolls as in the UK or have asked people to work without pay for a few months as in the Middle East or work at reduced salaries as in India. Private companies have found out that many business trips or travel or hotel accommodations were unnecessary and the same results can be achieved via conference calls. It has been a revelation that work from home is not as bad as contemplated vis a vis the employee productive levels. The huge savings on office rental expenses would be something companies, at least in the startup sector, would be keen to explore on a going forward basis. Airline or hotel and tourism, cruise ships businesses are in huge distress and we may see many leading international companies applying for bankruptcy in the near future. Example is Virgin Atlantic Airlines which has pressed the panic button already. In the case of financial institutions such as banks or NBFCs, there is a creeping uncertainty of NPA spike as a result of distress in many sectors. While debt moratorium is a welcoming measure it is just a temporary relief as banks or financial institutions are unable to quantify the spill over impact of people or businesses losing their income. We as a country felt ashamed to understand that there is no specific law to deal with the manhandling of doctors or medical staff who are working in the front line risking their lives. The government rose to the situation by comprehending the dire need of the how hour and has come up with interim measures. It won't be a surprise if India would cite a mass exodus of foreigners returning to India when pink slips are issued in order to protect the labor force. The foreign governments would be least committed to protect foreigners' employment. The government has imposed stringent measures on foreigners returning to India and in the district or state levels. We might have understood a bit how Ambani's and Tata's and other big Indian companies can contribute to nation building in times of crisis. Their actions such as constructing exclusive COVID-19 hospitals were loud enough to understand that these big corporates can match up to the levels of Indian government. So, we'll go on to predicting the future, the road ahead. Predicting the future, the road ahead. This is the most difficult task but the irony is that a few people make most of the money by predicting the future in the case of astrologers or numerologists or by selling dreams into the future. The marketing guy who sells a flat or villa for secondary rental income or selling systematic investment plans or financial products for financial freedom. However, let's aim to jot down a few life-defining changes this pandemic has brought about. 
Please keep in mind that the below predictions are based on the habitual changes which we have discussed above since the beginning of the lockdown. As new habits can be a bit radical, it would be futile to underestimate its far-reaching consequences. Let's start with life after COVID-19 and the impacts in our lives and families. Loss of jobs, food inflation arising from scarcity and online themes. See below for further comments on online themes. This would be the new normal along with social distancing. Startups and business entrepreneurs operating in non-essential sector will face grave recessionary impacts. Where these businesses are run on debt, they may feel immense pressure to pay their suppliers or employees as no fresh credit would be available from banks. Many sole proprietorship businesses would be forced to wind up leaving their employees jobless and penniless. With no certainty of future cash flows, people would generally spend less or defer large expenses. All big ticket items such as purchase of house or expensive cars such as Mercedes-Benz or Audi or Rolex watches or Birkin bag would be a touch me not. I wonder would consumers get paid if they buy certain consumer discretionary items similar to what happened in the case of oil. While some of you may ridicule this, Chinese firms are more than happy to offer some less needed discretionary products for free if you can pay the shipping costs. Growing veggies in our backyard and posting it via Instagram would be the new style statement. We will witness the growth of telemedicine apps more than ever. This would be touted as the next big recession-proof businesses. Engineering or management students are wondering how effective their online education would be and if there is any merit in paying millions to get foreign degrees from Stanford or in SEED. Coursera or Udemy or Khan Academy and such online education apps would be more famous than ever. New students and people who have lost their jobs would flock to these websites to train or upskill. Next millionaires or billionaires will be YouTube or TikTok account holders. Film actors or actresses would be wondering as to when can they act again. They would be in fact thinking and tanking the monetization scheme of Instagram which would help them to earn while in lockdown. They might be wondering as to whether animation movies would take the center stage in the coming years and the ways in which they can become integral parts of popular animation franchises. Cricket and baseball stars or personalities would be much relieved as there are no better sports than cricket and baseball which can be played with safe distancing. Medical students are wondering how to learn medicine with safe distancing and PPE. Dentists and dental students would also be pondering the same. Court system in India would be checking out innovative ways to work online. Packaged foods and QSR delivery may still function at reduced levels solely for takeaways. The opening of this sector will feed several people such as cooks, Swiggy or Sumato delivery guy and the hotel owner. We will witness employed people based in metros or tier 1 cities flocking to small towns or villages. If work from home would be the new normal, people who rent in cities would unfollow dense cities to live in their hometown or villages. Families falling within lower strata or daily wage earners may consider venturing into capital rearing and may buy one or two cattle or gods. These families can earn by selling milk in the neighboring households and more importantly, the payback time is less for their investments. People will travel less and in case of urgent travel, least preference would be given to travel via public transportation. This will create demand for automobiles available in lower to mid-segment price points. There will be a pent-up demand for insurance products, both health and life, 
to protect from the unexpected COVID-19 expense or death. Parents would be curious to know whether their kids' school would start online teaching. Also, they might be busy reading reviews to find out who is the best teacher offering online tuition. Online libraries or on-demand reading app may gain popularity among a minority section of the people who hate Netflix dramas. Similar to on-demand libraries or food delivery apps, there could be a wave for on-demand hair salon or hair stylist business with required safety protocols. Online dating websites will gain more popularity than ever with youngsters. With the possibility of recession, we will start looking at fixed interests offered by public sector banks than attractive rates offered by private or cooperative banks for greater safety. There is a contrarian view in light of what is happening across many countries in Europe that interest rates may now dive to negative rates in India. Investment in gold would be the new norm as systematic investment plans into equities may see a drop. Investment managers and relationship managers would advise fresh money and money from equities or equity oriented products to be invested in gold via ETFs or gold funds or even sovereign gold bonds issued by government of India. The foreign returned worker will turn into his cultivation in his own or leased agricultural land to the extent possible. The management level executives will try to compete in the local job market with that better foreign experience. We will see the rise of new technological development that would alert us when 6 meter safe distance is not kept. Apps and mobile phones or larger tools for the police force to monitor the population at large would be rampant once the lockdown is lifted. Now, let's dwell into the future as to what the governments and companies would do to tide over this crisis. Free money and supply of essential items would be the new norm at least in the beginning. Governments across the globe will print more money, that means more government fiscal deficit, and credit to everyone's bank account. The USA, Japan and Singapore have already started crediting money into bank accounts. In India, the poorest of the poor would receive further funding while everyone with proper documents would be eligible for essential supplies such as rice and pulses. It would be a ridiculous move to lift the lockdown completely without developing cost-effective and fast-track testing process, without which thousands would be at the risk of contracting COVID-19. Hence, it's important to permit only essential services to operate unless and until we find a fast track and cost efficient testing process or a vaccine. A fine balance between saving lives and permitting people to work should be government's focus along with tax collection. With this in mind, partial lockdown may be the new normal in essential sectors with government permitting companies to operate and people to travel for work with necessary safety precautions. This would help companies to operate and people to earn, both of which would contribute to the exchequer. In the meantime, government can build the necessary infrastructure and bar or fund research projects aimed at developing faster testing process or reducing the compact, the impacts of COVID-19. While there is a big hue and cry that youngsters should be allowed to work or start farming, it would be wise to get an assurance from the government or respective companies who employ them that they will pay hospital expenses. Otherwise, it would make sense for people to get adequate insurance covers before stepping out of the house. People may start farming given the talks of looming food scarcity or in order to avoid the boredom of sitting idle at home. However, the government should ensure that 
the chemicals and pesticides are readily available at inexpensive rates. It would be impressive if the government can provide crop insurance which would allay any fears and attract more people to farming to combat food scarcity issues. Businesses are facing bigger challenges than ever. If a business survives, several jobs will be protected. As private companies can equally help people to tide over this crisis, the government should support companies in all possible ways. Hence, government's focus should be to support businesses and in return, ask them to protect jobs. This can be done by following the UK or Singapore model, whereby the government agrees to pay a basic sum, which will be in the range of 50% to 70 of the median salary. World governments and companies would realign their supply chain in order to de-risk their dependencies on a single manufacturing or low-cost supply chain base such as China. We as a generation that learned about globalization in 1990s might probably relearn anti-globalization in this decade where companies would be forced to move their strategic and essential manufacturing or supply chain bases to neutral locations and home countries. While it is said that India would be one of the preferred locations in this anti-China move, we are yet to see how this would shape up and what extent of the supply chains would be moved to India. Certain businesses would be required to incur massive expense upfront before earning a single penny. Think about the expenditure Marriott or Hyatt should incur before opening up the hotels to guests. The same would apply to aircrafts or cruise ships and plants, which employs expensive missionaries in certain high-tech industries. The government could consider giving any tax breaks to these sectors which are worst hit by COVID-19. Hopefully, Aircrafts and movie theatres would be permitted to work at lower seating capacity on a going forward basis. In the case of airlines, the proposal is to leave out the middle seat to maintain safe distance. However, as people's habits have altered, it's yet to see how much demand would arise for air travel once airlines and theatres open. The Indian government should also communicate or liaise with foreign companies or governments to understand whether the Indian citizens have taken care well. If possible, a special task force should be created to ensure that Indian medical staffs working in high-risk countries such as UK, USA, Italy, etc. receives adequate personal protective equipment while working in the front line. To the extent possible, Food materials and essentials should be exported to ensure the well-being of the Indian diaspora. With billions of debts forgiven to Indian corporates, followed by the generous tax reduction for companies in January 2020, the government should defer personal income taxes until we tide over this pandemic. With income at stake, a waiver of personal income tax would be a big relief to the millions which would indirectly induce cash flows to meet the exigencies. The government should mobilize the psychologists and create an online app or web portal to address people suffering from distress or trauma caused by sudden job loss or financial instability. That sums up the rare view review and the prediction of the future until humanity has successfully found a cure for COVID-19. Lest the exact turn of events post-COVID-19 is beyond comprehension, humans across the globe are undoubtedly facing the biggest test of their times. Given that humanity has made so much progress to date, we are enthused with a heartening hope that we will overcome this unseen but highly contagious virus sooner than later as all the research labs across the globe are singularly focused on finding a miracle vaccine. In the meantime, let this test place 
an indelible stamp on our adaptability and resilience. While uncertainty is a new certainty, let me wind up by asking this million dollar question. Have you found your new happiness curve in these unprecedented times? Wish you all the best. Love and regards, Dr. Bipin Jose and Advocate Matthews B. Matthews.